Hello everyone, welcome to home school. So in this video, we will take up the eukaryotic cell and we know that eukaryotic cells or eukaryotes mainly include the, uh, the fungi, protists and plants and animals. So among these four, we are taking up the plant cell and the animal cell for our study. So among the plant cell and the animal cell, we will take up the animal cell today. The animal cell. So anyhow, as a eukaryotic cell, I mean general eukaryotic cell, we know that what is a eukaryotic cell? It is the cell which has a well-defined nucleus or a true nucleus or a advanced nucleus. And what is an advanced nucleus? We have already seen that there is a nuclear membrane. In case of the prokaryotic cell, we had written the genetic material in the cytoplasm only. There was no membrane which was covering the genetic material. So, that was not a well-defined nucleus. Hence, we, it was a primitive nucleus. Hence, it is called as prokaryotic cell. In the case of eukaryotic cell, it is a well-defined nucleus that is the cell with a or the nucleus with a nuclear membrane okay so there are many different shapes of the animal cell you you find n number of shapes but for the convenience of our study we will take the most common shape which is an oval shape so this is a typical eukaryotic cell and the outermost layer outermost layer of the cell animal cell is the plasma membrane now does a animal cell have cell wall no animal cell doesn't have cell wall cell wall is present only in the plant cells so, the only covering which is there for the animal cell is the plasma membrane which is made up of proteins and phospholipids. So, the structure of the plasma membrane, uh, how exactly it's it is functioning everything that we will see in the later classes. Okay. Next, since it is an eukaryotic cell, now we will directly move on to the nucleus part. So, <clears throat> There is a well-defined nucleus. It means that it has a nuclear membrane. Okay. This is a nuclear membrane. We will first name it. Nuclear membrane. Fine. Next, these small gaps in between the membrane are called as nuclear pores. They are called as nuclear pores. Now, there is some fluids or there is some matrix which is present inside the nucleus and that matrix is called as nucleo plasm it is called as nucleoplasm and then <clears throat> there is a thick constricted area there is a thick constricted region which is called as nucleolus nucleolus then there are fiber like or thread like structures which are present inside the inside the nucleus which is called as chromatin chromatin fibers chromatin fibers so the outer membrane is called as the nuclear membrane and this me nuclear membrane has two layers outer layer and inner layer and then the gaps between or the pores between these nuclear membrane is the nuclear pores and then the matrix which is present inside this is called as the nucleoplasm 
and a thick constricted area which is present is called as the nucleolus and then the chromatic fibers or the thread like fibers which are present are called as the chromatin fibers these are the one which carries the genetic information and this together okay these all st structures together will constitute nucleus okay this together is called as all together is called as the nucleus then outside the nucleus this is all the cytoplasm this is all the cytoplasm we'll write cytoplasm now we know that in the cytoplasm there are many membrane bound organelles in the eukaryotes in the prokaryotes there were no membrane bound organelles whereas in the eukaryotes it has got a well defined nucleus and all the membrane bound organelles so the very first membrane bound organelle which will start is the endoplasmic reticulum so see there are two types of endoplasmic reticulum one is a smooth endoplasmic reticulum other one is a rough endoplasmic reticulum so attached to the nuclear membrane okay or you can also extend it till the plasma membrane not an issue so here you can just draw it like this so <clears throat> we'll write it smooth endoplasmic reticulum means there are no ribosomes present on the endoplasmic reticulum the rough endoplasmic reticulum is if the ribosomes are present on the surface of the endoplasmic reticulum then such a endoplasmic reticulum is called as the rough endoplasmic reticulum see why they have given the name rough and smooth is when you touch this surface since there are no uh, ribosomes it is it is usually felt very smooth since the ribosomes are present here they are being felt rough hence this is called as this is called as smooth endoplasmic reticulum ser is smooth endoplasmic reticulum and this is called as rough endoplasmic reticulum and here these spots are called as ribosomes ribosomes and what are the type of ribosomes present here in the eukaryotic cell it is the ats type of ribosome the split is 60 plus 40 so that we'll study in the next classes when we'll see the details of the ribosome okay so the very first um the membrane bound organelle is the endoplasmic reticulum smooth endoplasmic reticulum rough endoplasmic reticulum next the <coughs> next organelle is near to the nucleus okay so very much near to the nucleus there is one organelle which is called as golgi complex okay and how exactly the golgi complex is present the convex side the convex side is always facing towards the nucleus and concave side is always facing towards the plasma membrane this is the golgi body or golgi complex fine this is the second membrane bound organelle next one is the very uh, very very important organelle that is mitochondria okay so this is mitochondria 
what is mitochondria called as mitochondria is called as the powerhouse of the cell why it is called as powerhouse of the cell that is because the atp is are generated in the mitochondria hence they are called as powerhouse of the cell after the mitochondria we have one more a uh, particular type of uh, membrane bound organelle which are only confined to the plant cell sorry animal cells and they are absent in the plant cells that is the centrosomes or centrioles see there are two centrioles in the animal cell please listen to this very carefully there are two centrioles which are perpendicular to each other like this these are two centrioles fine see i'll first name them this is centrioles two centrioles and surrounding these centrioles there are nine pericentriolar fibers 1 2 Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so these are pericentriolar fibers. Pericentriolar fibers. Now, these two centrioles plus pericentriolar fibers. Okay, Do these two centrioles plus peri nine plus nine pericentriolar fibers together will make up a centrosome. Okay, together will make up the centrosomes, and this is present only in the animal cell. And the centrioles or centrosomes are not present in the plant cell. they mainly help in the process of cell division fine next membrane bound organelle is vacuoles there are numerous vacuoles present in the animal cell and they are all small vacuoles whereas in case of the plant cell there is one centrally located large vacuole in the plant cell whereas in case of the animal cell here there are small small many or numerous vacuoles present which are distributed all over the cell next important part is i'll write it here it is cytoskeleton okay this is cyto skeleton the function of the cytoskeleton is mainly to provide the strength and a framework to the cell okay so the strength and the <coughs> rigidity or a proper framework is given to the cell by the cytoskeleton these cytoskeleton they can actually be in two forms that is they can actually be in the form of the tubules or filaments that is they can be in the form of micro tubules micro tubules or micro filaments okay micro tubules or micro filaments next one more organelle again which is very important and few of them are present distributed all over the cytoplasm is the lysosome lysosome all right so this lysosome is called as a suicide bag of the cell that is mainly because it has got all the digestive enzymes so if there is anything which is unwanted in the cell that unwanted molecules or that unwanted uh, part of the cell is sent to the lysosome wherein it will digest that particular molecule and send the 
biomolecules back to the cell for the renewal purpose or for the next usage purpose okay hence the lysosomes are called as the suicide bag of the cell so these are few uh, important parts of the animal cell so what you have to remember here is since it is an eukaryotic cell fine since it is an eukaryotic cell it, it has got a very well defined nucleus and if you are asked about the nucleus then you are supposed to mention all the nuclear membrane nuclear pores nucleoplasm nucleolus chromatin fibers all you are supposed to write okay nuclear membrane is of two layers the inner layer and outer layer nuclear pores this will mainly facilitate the movement of the molecules in and out of the nucleus fine so all should be mentioned for the nucleus then endoplasmic reticulum golgi body ribosomes vacuoles lysosomes plasma membrane centrosomes which are present only in the animal cells not in the plant cells and then cytoskeleton so these are the important parts of the animal cell which has to be uh, properly mentioned if they ask to draw a proper and if they ask to draw the animal cell in the examination okay so in the next video we will take up the plant cell thank you guys